The brain is a living organ. It needs nutrients and water to function every day. But the brain also generates waste, junk that needs to be cleared out and disposed of. So, how does your brain take out the trash? Hey there, Brainiacs. I'm Ali Astrocyte, and this week, we've got some exciting new research about the brain's glymphatic system, yet another way that your brain's glial cells are taking care of business. Yes. Let's start with the basics. You've probably heard of your lymph nodes, and you probably know they get inflamed when you're feeling sick. But did you know that lymph nodes are actually full of a fluid called lymph? That's right, it's not named after some super old physician. See, we're pretty juicy creatures. We've got all kinds of fluids circulating in our body to help keep us alive. Lymph is a clear fluid similar to blood plasma that circulates through the lymphatic system. It carries proteins through the body and, importantly, acts as part of the immune system, clearing out debris from dead cells and hauling bacteria to the lymph nodes so they can be destroyed and disposed of. The lymphatic system goes all over the body, except to the brain, we thought. For a long time, scientists and doctors didn't see any evidence that the lymphatic system went all the way up into the brain. Instead, they believed that another fluid in the brain, called cerebrospinal fluid, or CSF, took care of those functions instead. CSF is another clear, colorless liquid circulating around our brain and spinal cord and filling the hollow parts inside the brain, called ventricles. It acts like a sort of cushion for the brain, protecting against damage as it sloshes around in our skull. It also plays a role in immune function and, we think, cleaning up waste. The brain produces a lot of CSF every day, about half a liter, which is about this much and we're pretty sure that it filters out into the rest of the body. But scientists are still working on figuring out how exactly CSF is produced and where it eventually goes. In 2012, Danish scientists Macon Nedergaard and her lab coined the term glymphatic system when they published an exciting study that clarified how CSF could be helping the brain to clear out waste and maybe giving a hint at why sleep is so important for our health. And most exciting of all, it involves astrocytes. Dr. Niedergaard's graduate student, Dr. Jeffrey Illiff, was trying to figure out how the brain clears out debris if it's not connected to the lymphatic system. So he decided to inject dye into the CSF of mice to track the flow of the fluid. Using a technique called two-photon microscopy, a high-tech kind of microscope that lets researchers get a clearer look at deeper tissue levels, they found the CSF actually flows around the blood vessels of the brain. And this flow of CSF seems to be dependent on the astrocytes, and specifically the processes they wrap around the blood vessels of the brain. When researchers deleted a key astrocyte protein, aquaporin-4, a water transport channel, it had a big effect on the flow of CSF, knocking it down by 70%. Even more interestingly, mice that didn't have aquaporin-4 protein weren't able to clean out amyloid beta protein very well. And since amyloid beta clumps together and plays a big role in Alzheimer's disease, this could have pretty big implications for understanding neurodegenerative disorders. Not long after they published their research, another paper came out that showed the flow of CSF increases when mice are sleeping. And that's because the astrocytes of the brain actually shrink, leaving more space between the brain cells, so more CSF can get into the nooks and crannies of the brain. It's sort of like moving the couch when you're vacuuming. So it could be that one of the reasons sleep is so important for our health is because it lets our brains go into their deep cleaning mode, cleaning out all of the junk between our cells so we wake up nice and refreshed. All of this seems like pretty good evidence that our CSF is acting kind of like the lymphatic system of the brain, but not connected to the rest of the body. But recently, a new paper came out to confirm what some scientists have thought for years. The brain does have lymph vessels. We just hadn't seen them yet. In 2015, a group at the University of Virginia were trying to better understand how the brain's immune system works by studying how it moves immune cells around. By staining mouse brains for endothelial cells, the cells that line blood and lymph vessels, they were surprised to find new vessels in the heavy, leathery membrane surrounding the brain, called the dura mater. On closer inspection, they realized that these new vessels looked more like lymph vessels, not blood vessels and they housed important immune cells. These results were a pretty big deal for mice, but we still didn't know if humans had them too, until now. A team of scientists at the National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke, NINDS for short, 
just published a study where they tracked special dyes in the brain, one dye that could leak out of blood vessels into the nearby tissue, and one that couldn't. Then, they used an MRI machine to track where those dyes ended up. The dye that didn't leak acted exactly as expected and showed the blood vessels. But the dye that did leak revealed new, unexpected vessels lying right alongside the blood vessels, showing a separate structure entirely. This is some of the first modern evidence that humans do have lymph vessels in their brains, though it's not the first time it's been proposed. The lymphatic system is a critical part of our immune system, and if it's actually able to get into our brains, this could have huge implications for all kinds of diseases, from multiple sclerosis to Alzheimer's disease. Now scientists have to figure out how the lymph fluid gets into the brain, where it goes after, and whether or not it's even connected to the flow of CSF and the rest of the lymphatic system. Each piece of the puzzle will help us better understand the importance of our brain's garbage disposal in keeping the brain healthy, and how we can fix it when things go wrong. Thanks for watching this episode of Neurotransmissions. If you liked it, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to learn more about exciting new brain research. Head over to Patreon if you want to see how we created this video. Until our next transmission, I'm Ali Astrocyte. Over and out.